Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Android Central Podcast. It's episode number 78 for Thursday, November 10th, 2011. I'm Phil Nickinson. I'm your host for the podcast, and in life, I will guide you. All right, who is that? Whose phone is that? That was probably somebody that's not me, but I'll shut mine off just in case. Was it a good phone? Uh, no. Nobody's going to own up to it? What, it whoa, was me. What, Gary, what was it? What was it? <laughs> well... It was the Galaxy S2. Okay, well, it's a good phone. So, for those of you watching live, you can see us. Hi, how's it going? For those of you listening at home later, hi, how's it going? You can't see us. Uh, so, I am Phil Nickinson, the host of the podcast and AndroidCentral.com and all that good stuff. You just heard Jerry Hildenbrand from the site. Howdy, everybody. You can hear my dog. He's sitting on the bed. <laughs> dog. Dude. You, yeah, okay. We have Mickey Papillon. You know him as the cell phone junkie. Howdy, everyone. And Corey Streeter from the Android Central Forums. Hey, everybody. And from England and on video for the first time ever, <laughs> Alex Toby. Hey, good evening. And actually, I was I was on I was on video last time, but only Renee could see me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, that hardly counts. Then, huh? <laughs> I think he has, so, so, I think he has a mug of English beer or two there. Um, no, it's just Stella, same as Jerry's it, drinking. It, it better not oh. be like Coors Light or something. <laughs> no. So how sad is that? I'm the one who's sitting here, not only with a Guinness, but with a Guinness in a Guinness pint glass. What's wrong and with I'm Stella? Phoenix, Arizona. Nothing. I like Stella. All right, let's get to it, because we have more news than I know what to do with. Um, and we're going to have to deal with my momentary pauses as I cough myself to death because I was on the road earlier this week for another one of those 24-hour trips. Where do you guys want to start? Uh, you want to do Droid Razor? You want to do Galaxy Note? You want to do Nook Tablet? Somebody pick. Razor. Razor. Droid Razor. Let's start with the key. The key was awesome. Okay. Well, let, let's start with the Droid Razor. The, re- the review <laughs> is out. I'm going to start with that because we need to pimp our awesome... 36 hour review <laughs> so we got this thing on saturday uh and the review embargo lifted monday morning so it was a fairly quick review but still pretty extensive i think if i do say so myself since i wrote it um <laughs> love this phone love it a lot really good phone i tell you it's been a little while since i had a review unit that made me just not even charge the thunderbolt back up and this is it this has done it um, nice. It's big, right? The screen's only 4.3, only 4.3 inches, but the phone itself is really large. It's like two and a half inches wide. Then you uh, just a hair over that, I think. But the thing is so damn thin. It's really nice. It's light. It's fast. It's, I mean, I'm not sure I've used a faster phone at this point, right? It, it's dual core TIO map. Um, it's got LTE. The one thing it doesn't have, and this is a big thing, and it's going to be a big thing, even if it's okay for me or somebody else, it does not have a removable battery. That's a big deal. Mm. <laughs> did you guys have that planned no we just couldn't <laughs> help it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well and, and so here's the thing i used it um i got it saturday used it all day sunday was in new york on monday and traveling and that's usually pretty hard out of battery anyway right so i pretty much had the thing dead by the time i got home uh monday afternoon or monday early monday evening um, but battery life, as I've been sitting here working, just like normal, has been decent, but it's on Wi-Fi. The thing has been bouncing back and forth between 3G and 4G a little bit, or actually a lot, which is kind of odd, but it's even doing it while it's on Wi-Fi. And I've never actually seen a phone um, you know, show the 3G or 4G signal. You know, normally that turns off and you just see Wi-Fi, so I don't know, that's a little weird. Um, I don't know, what questions do you guys have? I like I wonder it if a that's lot. a bug. That seems a little Ooh. strange. How's the screen on it? Because I've heard a lot of sort of mixed things about the. Um, I love the screen. The I think QHD, the screen is beautiful. Um, thing. No, no, no. I, I like the screen. What are, I don't even know where I put the phone. No, I, I like the screen a lot. The black's really black. Um, you can just barely see, I think, the kind of pentile nature of it. And you get mm-hmm. a little bit of artifacting around uh, fonts sometimes. But in my use, it's been really good, I think. So do you leave it plugged in most of the time? Um, not really. I'd like to know so. what it's like to like, you know, because I travel a lot. I'd like to know what it's right, right, right. You like to like travel around for the day if it died. Yeah, there no, and, and that's my major concern is traveling. I don't think I could depend on it. Um, I mean, not because it's a bad phone, 
but just because I need something if I have to, you know, pop out the battery and pop in a new one, right? Mm. When you're traveling, right. I think that's imperative. Now, it's no surprise, I think. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not without a sense of irony that Motorola in all of its review packages, and they send us a whole bunch of crap, right? <laughs> they send us the docks and the web top dock and, and all that stuff. But they also sent one of those external batteries. So, and I, I use one of those mm. when I travel anyway, you know, just in case. But it makes me worry. If, if you have a phone that you need to be able to swap batteries out on, right, this is not the phone for you, probably. I wonder why they chose to go down this path. Uh, to make it thin. the thickness, surely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thickness. It needs to be thin as possible. I yeah, have a absolutely. Removable battery, but... Yeah. But otherwise, I like this phone a lot. I really, really do. Um, how, you know, kind of. T- I want to hear a little bit about kind of in the hand. How does it feel? I mean, obviously, I know it's thin. I've, I've heard some issues with it, like the it's not real comfortable um, to hold for it, long periods of big. time. But yeah, exactly. It's real big, and and I have small hands. Um, it's real big. I think it, it kind of has the same feel. It's not unlike a Droid X, right? It's that same thin with a fat camera up top thing. So your fingers fit on it kind of nicely, and I wish I had it sitting here, and I just don't. Um, uh, you, so you, I mean, it, fits, it, get, it fits against the hand nicely. It's big, and you're going to have to get used to that. And it's a little bigger than the Droid X, and a little taller, but it's good. Um, the screen's nice. It does get hot, too. You can fry an egg thing sometimes, especially when, you know, like when uh, you first sign in, it starts pulling in your emails and all that stuff. Um, you know, it was really, really hot. It looks like you got a pretty big bezel around the outside of it. How does mm-hmm. that sort of compare to other phones? It's a big bezel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really no other way to describe it. It's a big bezel. It has a really unique shape, too. It's very, well, it's very square, but it kind of has, at least from the picture, it looks like it kind of goes in and out a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the Droid Razor. I mean, it, you could definitely do worse, right? If this is one of Ryzen's big three phones for the next two, three, four months, um, it's a good buy. I don't think you can go wrong. It's going to get ice cream sandwich. We know this. Um, and that's it. How about the back? Going to get ice cream sandwich isn't good enough. I said it last <laughs> week. I'll say it every week. Don't buy yeah. a new phone that doesn't come with it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, an, that's so definitely a story against it. Don't definitely buy anything that's not a Galaxy Nexus is what you're saying. We'll get into that in Mickey wants to know about the Kevlar, so it's got this. I don't know about the Kevlar. I, you didn't shoot it. I, I was disappointed there. But. <laughs> I, I have no guns. I'm not a gun guy. Um, it has a Kevlar back, and I'm not quite sure how that works. Right? Uh, you can take a key to it, and in that video I did, I'm actually pushing really, really hard with the tip of the key. Right? Not with the sharp teeth. The sharp teeth will absolutely scratch it, and I did just in a little tiny corner just to test, so you can't even tell. But I'm it did. Telling. Yeah, it did scratch just a tiny little bit, you know, that way. So you can scratch the back, right? And, and, I mean, I don't know. Is it shock resistant? Maybe is that supposed to be it? I mean, it's not like it's woven Kevlar or like a bulletproof vest. Mm. I'll be honest. It sounds like a bit of a gimmick to me. Mm. Not something that's going to be particularly useful in any way, shape, or form. Like, hey, what can we do to, you know, spec this thing up? Yeah, and there's probably a list, right? I can see people sitting around a table and yeah. saying. Well, you know, let's put Kevlar on it. I had shin guards back when I played soccer or football, in deference to Alex. I had Kevlar shin guards. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, they were hard and protected my shins, but not unlike anything else, right? So, I mean, it's cool, but... It's a hard bullet point. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Anything else on the Razor? Who do we lose now? Oh, Alex. we lost Alex. Is he back? Is Alex back? I'm back. Ask- it's good, yeah. Yay. It's good. Well, now I don't have to ask you something. <laughs> <laughs> so about um, about 55 minutes after the uh, Droid Razor embargo broke Monday morning, I was in New York City at a uh, Barnes & Noble store in Union Square for the unveiling of... What we found out the week before, <laughs> the Nook tablet. Um, it's the Nook, right? It's basically the Nook color, only faster. And actually, the screen's pretty good. 
The screen's really good. Um, if you've used a Nook Color and were slightly disappointed by the screen a little bit, it was kind of matte. Jerry, you've got one. You use it all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's kind of a matte finish to it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's that's, a really nice screen. That's pretty much gone in the uh, Nook tablet, I think. I mean, the blacks are really black. The thing is fast. It plays video really well. Uh, I was talking with somebody from Netflix for a little while, so they're they're quoting this as, like, has the deepest Netflix integration of anything out there right now, which I'm not entirely sure what that means. I think it's just because they automatically feed the recommendations down to your home screen, which is fine, but anybody can do that, right? That's an API. Um, but the thing is really nice. It's 250 bucks. Uh, physically, it's you know it, it looks and feels like the Nook color. It's a tad thinner and a tad lighter, uh, but it's nice. I like it. Yeah, I'm order. looking forward to it. You gonna get one? Do what? Is it? Uh, is you gonna get that over the fire? Would you between the two? Well, I'm, I'm gonna have both. But <laughs> that's oh, the big you? question, right? Yeah, I mean th- that's the big question, and. The only problem I have right now with all these comparisons is nobody's actually touched and used a Kindle Fire. Uh, this thing has you know twice the RAM, and we know that can make a big difference. Mm-hmm. So it's got twice mm-hmm. the RAM. It doesn't have Amazon services, and that's a big strike against it, and rightfully so, I think. Uh, but the thing itself, it's really nice. BN's done a really nice job with the UI. You know, and the original Nook Color UI was pretty good too, right? Um, but just, you know, all the magazines, you got a lot of video. Um, I, I think a lot of people are going to be really happy. A big question is, now that it has this deep Netflix integration, is it going to be as hackable? I don't know. I mean, Jerry, you got any insight into that? Uh, I'm I'm just guessing it's not. It's not going to be like the original was. I'm not going to say it's locked down in any way, but mm-hmm. that that was a once-in-a-lifetime deal, the way they made the original. And uh, I just don't think we'll ever get that lucky again. We'll see. I don't know. I bet it might be. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, I hope. If you're right, I'll be a happy, happy man. But it's nice. I like it. Uh, 250 bucks. The Nook color's dropping down to 199 like we knew. The Nook Simple Touch um, is getting, yeah, I think it's getting a hardware revamp a little bit too, but then the original was, is getting a software upgrade that will make the page turners that much faster. Um, BN's doing some interesting stuff. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting holiday season for the e-readers. I don't really have a feel on how it's going to go one way or the other until we get the Kindle fire in hand. Oh, my God. Just in like five days. Awesome. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. Yes. I got to get my homework <laughs> so I can play. This is the one complaint I had about the original Nook because I thought it was a little laggy. So it's kind of nice to see her using mm-hmm. it and see it fly so, so fast. Yeah, Looks the browser's good. nice. Um the, oh, the one really cool feature is they have, I think it was called Read to Me, so you can record your own voice reading the stories and then play it back for your kids. That was pretty cool. Although, that was cool. Ooh, my kid's going to want somebody cooler than me reading to her. <laughs> it's the way it is. Dad, I want the cool voice. <laughs> There's nothing worse than getting an audiobook and then having the author, like, whoever's reading it, sounds <laughs> Um, anything else on the Nook Touch? I don't think so. They updated the uh, Android app this week. Oh, and Amazon updated uh, the App Store, right? So it looks more like the Kindle Fire, I guess. Yeah, now it bugs the crap out of me letting me know I have updates. <laughs> oh, it does? Mm. Yeah, I need to know and, how to stop it. And don't read too much into that uh, story that everybody did this week on the, you know, what was it? The Kindle Fire has thousands of apps available. Well, yeah, no kidding. It has the App Store. That's all that is. They put out a press release for that. <laughs> Actually, well, the big deal is that it's going to have Netflix, right? So it's going to have Netflix and Amazon. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a thing. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But again, I mean, you can't declare a winner yet until you actually touch the thing. And nobody has. Right. Period. So that's my thing on that. Anybody, I mean, is, any of you just have like a superficial, I like the looks of one over the other, therefore that's what I'm going to get? Or are you looking at them at all? Well, I, I think the fire is probably the one I would pick, but I'm already vested in the Barnes and Noble store. So mm. I, when the color two is out, yeah, that's that's for me. That's that's the one I'm getting for myself. 
Yeah, Black Man X in the chat room says, I like the hardware, it's the same as the playbook. And it was interesting, during the presentation, that was actually one of uh, Barnes & Noble's strikes against the Kindle Fire. And, and half of the presentation was them just bad-mouthing the Kindle Fire. And they're like, look at that, <laughs> it's based on the BlackBerry playbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. The uh, I like the looks of the Kindle Fire a lot more. It does look more like a tablet should look, right? And that yeah. makes sense, but... Oh, boy. Um, I'm waiting for Audible to jump into this game. Ooh. Have they not? Well, I mean, there's an Android Audible app. Yeah. But so, I mean, I how much see them else? putting out a tablet. Yeah. One thing, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but I will. But one thing the Netflix guy did say is that uh, they're redoing the, the uh, tablet side app soonish. So oh, that should get at some point, yeah. Because, I mean, right now it's just the phone app, right, scaled up. And uh, mm-hmm. my my five minutes of uh, iPad 2 versus Android tablets this week, I've actually been watching a couple movies, and it's so much better on the iPad. Just It feels better. The quality, in, is it just me or the quality of, like, the streaming on the Android Netflix app is just crap on tablets, right, because it's just scaled up? Yeah. Is it just me? Okay. No, it definitely is. looks a lot yeah. worse. So they're they're working on that. So hopefully soon. I hope, but it's coming. So that was cool. Nice guys, Netflix. I like them. Um, speaking of streaming, Flash. Let's talk Flash. Ah! No, nobody. <laughs> the only one. Most people listening, this is probably too old. Too we young. have it. Yeah, we do have for Flash. now. For how much? For now, yeah. Adobe officially said it is going to quit supporting Flash on mobile, and that means a couple things. And Renee, if you need to jump in here. Renee uh, Richie from the iPhone blog is is lurking about and knows a little bit about this stuff and far more than I do. Um, so I mean, basically, that means at some point HTML5 will take over. Uh, something I didn't think about, and I've heard a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, you know, mobile sites aren't optimized with Flash anyway," and that's kind of not the point, right? Um, Flash players going the way of the dinosaurs, and they're going to use Adobe Air for apps, which we already do. Right? Yeah. Jerry, are you sad? Uh, well, yes and no. Not for video streaming. I Flash does a, a, a lot of UI stuff on some mm. web pages that I still have to visit. Uh, one thing is, you know, a, Adobe held the future of, of the web in their hands. We were right. never going to move all to HTML5 until Adobe just said, screw it. You know, Flash is just too easy. People are going to use it. Uh, I just... You know, I, I worry, what about Ice Cream Sandwich? Are we not going to get Flash on Ice Cream Sandwich? And if so, what do we do if we need to see all the internet for the next couple of years? You think hmm. there's a possibility there's no Flash and Ice Cream Sandwich? There's got to be. Right? Yeah, well, they... yeah I, I'd be amazed if that wasn't. There's got to be. Yeah, all right, Blackman X says yes. I mean, the code's got to be there now. It has to. I Let's start a riot. Start a rumor. Oh, I wasn't trying to start a riot. That was a legitimate concern when they said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, when platform versions change, they're they're not going to be supported. I wondered yeah. if they meant ice cream sandwich or not. Uh, so now we know. I mean, yeah, ice I cream sandwich is already done in the bag, isn't it? So, yeah. Panda, you should have emailed me and let me know. I worry about these things. <laughs> At the same well, time, Flash is such a pig. I mean, it's so it bogs things down. I actually turn it off on my phone. I mean, it's, I guess it's cool that it's there, but as an, if you want it, you want it. But it does slow things down a lot, I think. Can I give you my two cents, Phil? Yes, please. So for, for me, it's, uh, there's, it's twofold. One is that Flash was like ActiveX or Real Player. It filled a gap that the web just couldn't handle on its own mm-hmm. for a certain period of time. And then the web evolved and it became less and less necessary. And like we don't have to use ActiveX very much anymore, we won't have to use Flash very much. But I think it's also great for Adobe because they were originally the best content creation company in the world. And then they inherited Flash from Macromedia and they got analytics from Omniture and it kind of split their focus. But this might let Adobe go back to being the fantastic creative suite Adobe that we actually really love. And Air, I mean, Air is an interesting thing. And, and we only see it kind of from an end user perspective. But if you see how easy it is for developers to create an Air app and then literally with just a couple lines of code have it run on Android or have it run on iOS or mm. anybody else yet? Windows mm. Phone 7 yet. 
Um, I mean, it's an interesting thing. So it's not like Adobe is just going out of business, right? Oh, no. They're yeah. going to refocus and probably put out a, a suite of tools that everybody will use to code HTML5 apps. Amen. No flash on TVs anymore, too. Or, you know, whenever it dies, dies, whatever. Well, we need to get it dead on the desktop. The sooner it dies on the desktop, the faster the web will change. Right. And that's going to take a long time, isn't it? Yep. Because it's very much alive and well on the desktop on pretty Mm -hmm. much every platform. Well, And and Rim's going to hang on to it with the playbook. So, you know, like six people are going (laughs) to... He's gonna make me joke. <laughs> oh, I almost got Jerry to spit out his beer. Oh, we were so um, on. <laughs> Damn. I'll have to try again. Damn. Yeah, I mean, so so Crackberry Kevin and and those guys will be you know using Flash and that'll be it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, the web adapts. That was kind of my thing. It was getting a little sickening seeing everybody say Steve Jobs was right. Steve Jobs wins even in death, and it's like uh, uh, no, no. Oh, Steve Jobs has absolutely nothing to do with this. You know, maybe his vision of of what he wanted to see happen uh, was correct, but <laughs> Jesus, people. <laughs> it's another case he was ahead of his time. Well, He sure. wanted the right thing, but there was no way it could happen then. Right, and it just wasn't going to happen. So, hey, that's Flash. We kind of flew through all the news. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Alex, well, why don't you talk about the Galaxy Note for a minute? Yeah, the Galaxy Note is, is a really interesting little device that's actually not such a little device it's kind of huge it's a 5.3 inch phone that i've been playing around with the past few days um it's i don't know it's it's kind of halfway between a a phone and a tablet and there are a few sort of pitfalls that it sort of falls victim to Um, i I mentioned this in the review and despite it being a really really good device being really fast having an excellent screen there's no way i could use it as my uh, sort of daily driver and that's pretty much the bottom line for me. I knew it. <laughs> it, it was huge, and I've I've picked one up. I mean, the damn thing is just. Whereas the Droid Razor is big, this thing is big. Yeah, it's it's big. as big as the Dell Street. Side by side, they are the, they're the same size. And I've used four point seven inch phones before. I got the HTC Titan here, and I can use that just fine. But five point three is is too big, and I don't think we're going to see any mainstream phones that are, are that size. Um, that's not to say all, all the technology that Samsung has inside the Galaxy Note is worthless, because I mean, absolutely isn't. They've got a um, 1.4 gigahertz Exynos in there. They've got um, Gingerbread, the little latest version of TouchWiz. They've got their really, really awesome HD Super AMOLED. So there's a lot of stuff in there which maybe on a phone or a tablet would work really well. But I think in that sort of in-between form factor, they're limiting themselves to a really, really small market. Um, you know, one that I don't really fit into, so it's a bit difficult for me to imagine, <laughs> uh, you know, how that would work. Uh, the pen stuff is pretty cool, though, uh, and I, I would really love to see that sort of brought to a little bit more forward on uh, on tablets, like we've sort of like we've seen on the HTC Flyer. So it's a similar kind of thing as as you got on the Flyer. It's a pressure sensitive pen, so you can make notes, you can draw, you can do all kinds of stuff. And you can even use it uh, just as a replacement for normal touch gestures that you would use using your finger. Um, so there's a lot of really cool and interesting tech there on the Galaxy Note, but I think um, for most people it's not going to be the phone for them, and I think you're going to have to wait until this kind of works its way into other Samsung products. Alex, have you got that the phone in front of you right now? I haven't. It is packaged up ready to go back to Samsung, unfortunately, so no... Okay. You'll have to have All an right. 18-wheeler to ship that giant thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Do you need that special pen in order to use it? You don't. You can just use your finger normally if you want to. But yeah. I mean, my problem with it is that um, so our Android's based around being able to reach all parts of the screen at all times. You know, you want to be able to reach all the way up to the top and pull the notification bar down. And yep. on the note, that is a bit of a problem unless you have gigantic hands. I was gonna say you probably can't even hold it and like type on it, right? Like send a it's message. A bit, it's a bit. Of, I mean, I, I mentioned this in the review, but it's even a bit difficult just reaching across and pressing the menu button if you're right-handed. Yeah, there are all kinds of a, problems there that you get. Go on. That that comparison picture in the review—that's with the Titan, isn't it? 
Uh, the yeah, titan. the Titan's the one in the middle, I think. So I, I've got the Titan. The, <laughs> and then um, that's it's so no ridiculous. Spring chicken. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, to put it in perspective, like... the Titan is two foot wide, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Titan's a big phone. It's it's 5.7. It is not. Well, a and, and Alex is eight feet tall. I can't tell <laughs> right. the video here. But... Yeah. yeah. You, you I, said, I, don't know. I, just, uh, I, I, I you love the pressure? idea of it. That's why I wanted to hear you talk about it tonight because I, I, I think this is going to, it's going to be I, a, a niche that is going to fill, uh, you know, fill a need for some people. In fact, I've already yeah. had one person reach out to me, you know, asking about it and just, you know, is this a good phone for me or not? And it's interesting, right? Because it's, it's, it's I, that that blend between the phone and the tablet. And if you don't want to carry both, maybe this works. And if you can get around the the size, then hey, great. And it's got a yeah. you know a stylus that actually does a pretty darn good job. And that that's that's kind of compelling. Again, I'm not the use case either, but um, this this is the first niche thing I've seen in a, in a while that I think is actually going to be useful. You know, I still think 3d is just not there. I, I'm not, I'm not sold on that, but this, this I totally can see. Yeah. I think for the right, like I said in the review, for the right person, this is a hell of a device and there's going to be someone out there who's going to find this really useful and it's going to be just the right sort of mix between tablet tech and phone tech. Um, but for most people, I think they're going to be much happier with a galaxy S2 if they like that kind of Samsung UI. It's just to be clear. It's not. Is it? It's not resistive. It's capacitive still, right? No, it's, it's capacitive. The pen is um, pressure sensitive. Okay, but if it's inside not, the phone, it's a la Windows yeah, Mobile. Does, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Score. Score. <laughs> That's old school. Yeah, yeah, it is. Next, we'll get one with an antenna that you pull out. <laughs> I bet Don't if you go to Korea, you that. can. We we'll buying that thing. <laughs> yeah. Remember, I had that. Uh, I had one. One of those uh, Korean LG phones that had an antenna, mm -hmm. TV antenna. Mm -hmm. In the world what of else? smartphones, it's very retro. It's very trio, right? Takes, I miss my dude. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about the Transformer Prime, which is now officially official, even though it was showed off, shown off, you know, a month ago by the CEO for President Vesus. Um, so we had a little press briefing on. Wednesday? Tuesday. One of them Tuesday. days. <laughs> Tuesday night. We had a press briefing, and they walked us through it, and so we wrote up a nice little preview. Um, haven't actually touched the thing yet, but damn, it looks nice. This thing looks sweet. So it's thinner, it's lighter, sexier, it's metallic, it's no longer plastic. Um, it's the first quad core, although we keep saying quad core, but the damn thing actually has five cores. And yep. uh, if you haven't yet, go read Jerry's write-up of Tegra 3, because that's the other big giant spec in this thing. And so Tegra 3 has five cores. You've got a quad-core chip and then a single core. Um, or, is it, or is it dual core? Is it, no, it's single core, right, Jerry? The single companion, companion core, yeah. That five. runs at like 1.4 gigahertz, though, right? Three or four, I forget which. Yeah, the, the five cores can, and... Then there's uh, 12 GPU cores. I mean, it's just a, a core extravaganza in that thing. <laughs> watch, watch the demo videos from NVIDIA because it's pretty awesome to see. And it, I never thought about something like that. And that was, you know, they didn't mention anything about that in Mobile World Congress in February when they showed us, like, the, the reference platform of quad-core, of kal -El, when that was first announced. Um, yeah, they held and, out a lot. Yeah, well, it. they did the white paper on the companion core like a month or two ago, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't really understand it, and it was like, all right, whatever. But seeing the the bars and the video, like, it makes sense, right? It totally makes sense. Like, all the core Android apps, all the core Google apps only use that companion processor. They don't use the quad core. Um, so, and it's a lower power chip, right? So it's mm -hmm. not sucking as much. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing more tablets with this. Me too. It's still pricey. It's still five hundred bucks, but five hundred bucks for thirty-two gig, and then six hundred for uh, sixty-four gig. If you're looking for fast, you cannot find any fat thing faster than that, right? I, <laughs> that I think so. I mean, it's mm. gonna... Not right now, no. I don't think so. So here's my wait. question: is Is there any reason to buy a Tegra two tablet with this on the horizon? I would not nice. buy. Yeah, yeah. I, I would buy a Tegra two tablet today until this thing comes out and you're going to see more when you do we know what's inside the uh zoom 2 i assume it's, it's not an omap it's an omap from oh, yeah. 4460 
This is going to be the one to beat for sure. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is badass, especially yeah. if you're going to be outputting video. Um, we, you know, we saw what it, what it can do with gaming back in the reference platform, right? And we've seen the demo videos now. I mean, it's incredible. Um, I've been playing a lot of uh, Infinity Blade on the iPad too, and you know, I God, I want more games like that on, on Android. And we have a few, right? We've, you know, we have some pretty good tablet games. I'm going to file uh, for divorce if you say that word one more time. I, I know. I, I'd almost <laughs> forgotten from last week that you had one. Actually, well, here's my new toy. So I got a Connect for the Xbox this week. So I've been playing with that all week. And now I want to start playing games on that. Like Fruit Ninja on there is pretty cool. You I'm sorry. I'm just playing with toys. <laughs> said, last week, your daughter, you're thinking your daughter, you, the true test would be if your daughter got a hold of it and wouldn't give mm-hmm. it back. Well, she's like that with anything. Yeah. She was like that with the uh with the Galaxy Tab ten too. So no, mm-hmm. and she's loved Connect. I want to see something like that with, with Google TV now. Oh dude, we could totally do that. It's got USB host. Connect is open source. Yep. Somebody's already thought of it, I'm sure. Somebody's probably already done it. Are you kidding? Somewhere. To the internets. <laughs> Um, hey, anything else? I've seen a microwave that works on a Kinect. That's true. <laughs> Explain that real quickly. I don't, I don't know the whole thing. He's got he's got a Kinect hooked up in his microwave. He's got a TV on top of it, and it's just it looks completely awesome. And I'm so jealous every time I see it. Hey, uh, it's time for our weekly update of Galaxy Nexus news. <laughs> and it's been canceled. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> All right, that's it. Double what day is it me. coming out? Hell if I know. Thursday. Uh, Droid yeah, Life got a screen that says the week of the 21st, whenever that is. Um, I'm hearing they're still back and forth on when it's going to put be put out and how it's going to be released, whether you can buy it in store or online. I don't know. I mean, it's a little ridiculous. And the, I was thinking about it again today. This is really turning into just another phone. I mean, I understand it's not easy when you have the likes of Samsung, Verizon, and Google all sitting at the table together, um, you know, because it's a Nexus phone, therefore you have Google involved. It's a Samsung phone, and and the, you know, it started with the Nexus S, right? Like it was the Samsung Nexus S. It wasn't just the Nexus S. Yep. Uh, now we have the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, and you saw it at the event. I mean, that was a Samsung event. I've been to I don't know how many of them now, right? I mean, it, it makes sense. Um, but with the Nexus One and still sitting here and this thing holds a charge forever when you don't actually use it. Um, <laughs> and like, it's just been on standby sitting here. Um, but I mean, it says HTC down here on the bottom, right? But when it was announced, it wasn't announced as the HTC Nexus one. And it just shows you where we've come. And it, it's kind of gone from this cool, not mythical cause it, it exists and we, you know, I've seen it, but this cool Nexus phone because that's what it was to just another phone. And I, I hate to say that, but it almost has. I mean, it, it's still an important phone, right? It's the reference platform for Android at this point. But it's just another phone. And, and, and with this release, and I hate to say it's being bungled, but it's being bungled. They're turning it in to just another phone, and it's sad. Well, it's it's been like that ever since the original Nexus, because the original Nexus was sold directly by Google. Yep. And now it's being fulfilled through carriers, and so we're never going to have that experience. Well, but the Nexus S was a little different because that was only online or at Best Buy. So at least that was still kind of funneled through one thing. Um, and I complained about that at the time. <laughs> you know, Now it seems like a good idea. It's, it's just depressing, and it's making me sad, and I want this phone. And if we don't have it here on the 17th like the U.K. does, like Europe does, <laughs> I'm going to be pretty pissed off. Yeah, but you know, I, Verizon I never that, committed that in their press release. Everybody keeps holding them to these blurry cam shots. And in their press right. release, they said by the end of this year, which could be December. I thought they said uh, November. Did they not? I thought they or said did, the they end just of said this later, year. I think it was. Later this year? Yeah. Yeah, later this year. Well, That's not November thing, 17th. Something. I hope it is. But just like I the Thunderbolt, be- it was like they said – they didn't. They never committed to a date. And until they do, until they announce it, it's anybody's best guess. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I don't know. But They're trying I, to get it I, to I, work uh, with the LTE, probably the battery life and all that kind of stuff is probably still being ironed out. That's not even what bothers me. I mean, because again, that turns it into any other phone. 
Yeah. Right. You know, put the damn thing out. It's got pentaband, right? We can use it on every other carrier here. I'm sorry if Verizon has problems, and I love Verizon. I, I really do. But put the damn phone out. If we don't get it at the same time, <laughs> the rest of the book, just it, give it to us. Uh, it's a serious black mark on the Nexus line, I think. No, don't. I already spent my money. I won't have it till January. Don't oh. put it out. <laughs> you already spent your money? Did you order uh, what I think you ordered? Yeah, the N9, yep. Oh, you did it. Ooh, wow. Yep. Hey, so you're going to give me crap phones. about using an iPad. Give Jerry crap about <laughs> getting Symbian. Dude. Uh, I'll play with it. There you go. <laughs> Alex well, I hate to throw this out there, but you know, the later the Galaxy comes out, the closer that gets to the next like huge announcement for something that's even. I mean, everybody's asking, should I wait till like you know the next thing, or what's the next best thing? Should I even get this? But well, we had, there could be some pretty amazing announcements come CES. Well, we and, have the. Which would mean, you'd only have to wait a few more months. Yeah, I guarantee we'll you, there will be. Mm-hmm. There we absolutely had the will. The Edge week this week, didn't we? Maybe there'll yeah. be an N10. Yeah. <laughs> and and don't forget, we still have uh, Intel stuff coming at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't know, mm. don't know when, and they said sometime in 2012, right? But you know, CES is a possibility. I, although I think they've said they were waiting for Ice Cream Sandwich to do anything, so I don't know. CES could be a possibility. MWC is probably more likely, but that's the end of February, and that's not that far away. I was, you know, I'm already starting to schedule stuff for that. Um. I don't know. I just don't want to see it become another phone. That's my thing. Speaking of ice cream sandwich, by the way, um, HTC announced some phones that are actually going to get it. And they are. And they are. Anybody? Anybody know? Uh, the Resound. Yeah, pro- probably the Sensation the XL, two- Sensation XE. What's the difference? I don't remember. The, the XL is the, the big Thunderbolt one. was not on that list. No, the Thunderbolt is not on that list. No. Sensation XL, Sensation never XE, ice cream Resound, uh, Evo 3D, Evo Design 4G, and Amaze 4G. And the Sprint came out and said the exact same thing for its phones. Um, yeah, no Thunderbolt. So Jerry was right. Major burn, I think. That's terrible. Uh, no, the Thunderbolt was a one-off. You, you bought it to be an early adopter and try the new LTE network. You, you had your fun. You think Verizon maybe held all the OEMs, not hostage, but just really gave them the hard sell, be like, everybody else is on board for LTE. You don't want to be the only one to miss out. And so they said, all right, here you go. And they slapped like a, you know, an LTE radio in the Evo, and that was it. Uh, maybe. I could see that. I could, I could totally see that. And I don't I understand of- why. I mean, what? Is there some well, I, huge technical reason they can't put ice cream sandwich on it? No, because Verizon sells no. a butler. Oh, why, oh, why it's not going to get it, you mean? Yeah, it's only nine months oh. old. Well, it oh, has the same chip as every Sony Ericsson phone with this year, which is going to get it. I absolutely know that the carriers order from the vendors. I'm the one who reminds everybody else. But, <laughs> and, you know, at the same time, they work together. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. And Verizon sells a buttload of phones. No, I mean, we knew this was going to happen. We knew there were going to be phones that aren't going to officially get it. That's yep. life. Sucks, but that's life. That's our flagship. Okay, I'll be quiet about it, but that's our flagship LTE phone. They, sh- I think they should be doing something with that. They have like five LTE phones now. But that was their – everybody was so excited. They, they sold a lot of those phones. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I think it should get it. Just like the Evo. The Evo got everything. It's mm-hmm. still getting everything. And they haven't said it's definitely not getting it. No. So it might, just, no. it might just take a while. That's true. Yeah. It's, uh, it'll get uh, it by the, our community. I will be forwarding right? those emails to Alex Dewey at AndroidCentral.com. Cyanogen. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, that's what it's going to take. Exactly. Um, hey, the Epic 4G got gingerbread, by the way, for what Finally. that's worth. I guess. My mom's hasn't gotten hers yet. I checked. I assume well, the update hasn't been manually old. updated for her. Well, I mean, I was gonna, but then I, no, I'm going to hold off because Sprint's been, you know, having a problem with updates lately. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm not going to do hers yet. You know, you just made me think of something. Usually with... Uh, Nexus phones, you get all the updates and you get them really fast. 
Right. Like any, anything that Google puts out, I wonder if that's going to change now. Uh, you know, just kind of going back to what you said, I wonder if that's going to change mm-hmm. now that Verizon's in the mix. Um, or you want to start a riot, don't you? Uh, <laughs> Possible. Well, no, because, yeah. because we had that same question with the Nexus S4G, right? Not Now, it's not quite the same because, as Mickey can tell you, you know, Verizon ain't quick with updates. They, they test the crap out of their updates, right? Yeah, they do. But, oh, hi, dog. My dog. My dog. So it took me 10 minutes, but I'm kind of, now I'm agreeing with you. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it is just another phone that happens. <sighs> Makes me sad. You want to do a couple of uh, emails and voicemails and we'll get out of here? Sounds mm-hmm. good. So let's start with, how about Jerry from Canada? What? No, not Ew. you. <laughs> Let's start with Jerry from Canada. I am the great and powerful Oz. Hello. This is Jerry from Canada. Hi, guys. <laughs> My name is Jerry. I'm in Toronto. The new Nexus phone. But what everybody says, it's fantastic. Okay, great. Thing is, is it worth waiting to get a phone that's non-skinned? Because... We might not get that up here till April, but we'll have the new Motorola Razor, you know, all the other phones. I've got a feeling they're going to hold back the Nexus, just like Phil said. He says, yeah, I don't have a good feeling about this phone being available to the States. Well, I don't think it's even going to be available in Canada, let alone the States. So should I wait till it comes available in Canada or should I just buy a skin phone like the Razor or something else? Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. All right, yeah, hang on. I, I think Wait. we're talking two, two different things oh. here. All right, you've got a skin, you, you've got a skin, you know, a launcher and UI and all that stuff, and then you have frameworks, right? I don't use stock Android UIs. Um, ice cream sandwich might change that, but yeah. If you're trying would, to decide between a Nexus and something else, you should wait till January. Yeah, don't, I'm just sort of don't compare it to by the way now. Canada seems to be in that it, it's closer to the way European carriers work than it is to the way American carriers work. And I yes. think Canada will get it before the end of the year, without a doubt. I think Canada will get it before everybody in the States that's not on Verizon gets it. No, oh, I, yeah. uh, I think Chris Parsons is going to be driving across the border, or Renee, and uh, <laughs> handing a couple <laughs> off. <laughs> not that Maybe we would ever do that ever <laughs> that would be bad <laughs> yeah I'd, if you can wait a month and a half wait a month and a half and let's see yeah I would do um, alright how about Charlie hi my name is Charlie my question would be actually I'm tired of cell phone contracts um, my uh, contract is about to expire my idea is just to get a cheap phone to use Google Voice to forward my mail and get a decent tablet um, that I can use to read the messages and whatnot. Um, I would like to have a phone possibly that's a Wi-Fi hotspot. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have a Wi-Fi hotspot, a Wi-Fi card, which I already have. Any suggestions would be welcome. Thank you very much. Move to England. <laughs> Move to England. Seriously, we've got some awesome pay to go deals over here. Huh. And we've got some big rubbish over here to use mm. a British term. This we is an interesting wireless. question. This is, isn't this an interesting question though? I mean, this I'm hearing this more and more from people is they they get they get sick of the, you know, not only the, the two year contract, but what it means if they decide that they want to leave it, which is a you know, three hundred and twenty five dollar or three hundred and fifty dollar fee that they have to pay. And it's really hard to explain to somebody what a subsidy is for a phone when, you know, they're used to getting the free phone or, you know, when you go and you pick up one of the expensive ones, you know, it's, well, it's only 200 bucks, but then it's, you know, another 300 if you leave. But anyway, um, I, 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 I am trying to think of what the best way for him to go would be here is I think the Google voice thing is an okay way to go. I mean, you have to, um, you have to really get your ducks in a row if you're going to do that, though, especially if you're trying to do voice calls on, you know, multiple different devices, right? But um, 
I, I don't know. It also comes down to how much, you know, how much is the convenience uh, worth it to you? Um, I have tried in the past to do interesting things with that, and it all comes back to, well, you know, it, it's, it, it just almost feels like it's more hassle than it's worth to try and put something like that together. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to also go back and, and think of what each part of his question was because he said, he said what? He said a cheap phone, he said a tablet, and then a phone that does a mobile hotspot or a mobile hotspot separately that you're going to be able to do that. And here's the deal. The only way I think you're going to be able to use a mobile hotspot to do anything with voice is if you get something that's LTE and the latency is low enough and you've got good coverage in your area to be able to provide it to you because otherwise I just don't think it's going to be, it's, it's not going to, in the real world, it's not going to work out well for you. Well, in eight years ago, we were, I mean, we wanted a converged device and that kind of like goes against that, right? Now you're carrying all these different things again. It's not going to happen. It's just, no. it's not going to mm-hmm. happen. Well, not in the U.S. anyway, especially. Too much money yeah. to be had. Yep. There's some, no, all this said, hold on a second. All this said, <laughs> there, are, there are some good prepaid deals out there. Um, it's, it's not like we're, you're not going to be able to find something. I think, what is it, Walmart's got the $30 unlimited text, unlimited data in like 100 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. If, you, mm-hmm. if you buy directly through them. So that's not bad. You know, Virgin's pretty good and Boost is pretty good as well. Um, it's, it, what, the, what, I'm, what I'm concerned about is him getting a, a, you know, a phone, a piece of hardware that's going to work well for him uh, versus you know, trying to get a tablet and make that fit with this. And um, you, you're not going to get shared data. You're not going to be able to do mobile hotspot stuff on any of these prepaid plans I don't think. And if you do, it's going to be an additional charge, and then you're really up to the price of what a postpaid contract would be, right? So, Yeah, I mean, un- unless he wants to either you know, jailbreak or hack something, it's not going to happen. I will say this. Ever since I got this really nifty thanks again for this uh, arm thing for the microphone, I've been using Skype quite a bit, three bucks a month. You could put that on a tablet. Like you, you know what voice. I've been doing? Because I have this First big well. thing sitting in front of me all day long, right? That would be the microphone, this thing. I make calls through Google Voice and Gmail on this because yep, you can do absolutely. it through Gchat, right? And so the phone rings and I you know, pick it up on here. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm on a podcast, Mike. How do I sound? How do I sound? <laughs> I'm very important. I have a big mic that goes wee. <laughs> it swings. <laughs> you know, and it's cheap. Relatively yeah. free. Um, all right, final voicemail, Will. Hey, guys, this is Will calling from Boston for the Android Central podcast. I'm a longtime listener, first-time caller. I'm asking about headphones for an Android phone. I'm currently running the Samsung Fascinate on Verizon, and I was looking for something that has an inline controller. So, um, for example, like a lot of the iPhones, they have those controllers on the, the lanyard that allows you to control speed and volume and all those good things. Uh, any help will be great. Thank you. Now, what I'm using here doesn't have controls for music, right? I mean, that's not just a iPhone thing, obviously. Correct? Yes. No? What, what did no you just idea. say? <laughs> Never used them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I okay. think Mickey definitely has something to say about this. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah, is that is yeah. this not clear enough? I, I didn't, you know. No, so there's um, the, the the ones that I would recommend um, at least to take a look at because I, I do really like them. I'm a I'm an in ear guy um, for the show. I actually use the uh, just the you know standard over the ear ones, but for in ear, I, I really um, I, I like the Zag earbuds. They have this uh, inline microphone with them. In fact. For those that are on the show, if you bear with me a moment, I will get them out of my bag because I use them actually quite a bit. Um, and I think they're called the Smart Buds. And um, they're 50 bucks, and they have an inline controller on them. They have an inline little deal that allows you to slide the volume up and down, and they work out really, really well. Um, it has a couple of little, uh, I'll call them little clips on the, the actual line that, that um, allows you to uh, kind of adjust on how it goes, and they... You know, they're the, your standard, you know, over the ear, go in the ear thing. And then you've got this little controller that's got a little switch on it, you know, where you can 
switch it to, to click you know, between songs and then this little slider that adjusts the volume. So you don't actually even have to pull the phone out to adjust the volume, um, which is a really nice thing as well. So like I said, I think they're 50 bucks. They may be more. There's a couple of different options out there from Zag. There's one that does just, it's just like a typical pair of headphones and one that has the inline controller. So that's mm. going to be my recommendation. I was looking through the store. I think we've got a couple in our store as well. Well, you to describe to that sounds awesome. Yeah, I might actually they, I, one of those. I, I do really like them, and because they're in ear, they've got the little silicone things. It does a lot of noise cancellation. So um, I'll call these my uh, vacuuming headphones. <laughs> You're vacuuming. <laughs> Am I the only one who does that? I I I, I rarely listen to music or anything at home on my phone, except when I'm vacuuming and I put on put on headphones and walk around and listen to stuff. You vacuum? <laughs> I, we, we don't all have, you know, the money to get a maid, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a couple uh, emails and we're done. John writes, I have two Gmail addresses on my Thunderbolt. I managed to somehow switch IDs and have 58 apps under my main account and 33 under my secondary. Oops. That was me saying oops. Uh, I realized the issue when the Pocket Cast app wanted me to pay for it when I was trying to upgrade it. Is there any way to combine them? I don't want to install 33 apps from my secondary Gmail account and reinstall them under the primary account, especially because some are paid for. Uh, man, I tell you, I just realized I kind of have this problem too, and I don't think it's with a lot of paid apps, but I've got my Gmail account, uh, account and my Smartphone Experts account. And it wasn't until probably one of the last few versions, right, when they really uh, upgraded it to the uh, account switching that obviously this happened, but I've, I'm not quite sure how it decided to uh, default to my SPE account at some point. Hmm. Does this happen to you guys at all? No, I only no. keep one account on my phone just mm-hmm. because I don't want to keep mm-hmm. track of it, so I, I'm I'm out. <laughs> Has anyone ever tried email, like contacting them and see if they would just transfer them over? I mean, like <laughs> iTunes will, right? Mm. All right, I'm going to have to explain Christmas to Corey here soon, too, I think. Maybe the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> hey, it's worth a shot. Have you done it? I'm just asking. And the Easter he Bunny. He a point. Let's, yeah. let's let All Corey right, try. Huh? We'll, we'll film it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me know when the, that works out. Apple does so, it. So, uh, no, hey. there's, there's no easy way to do that. Yeah. Anybody want to take the second email? Yes. No. So my wife's job is switching from us from at t to Sprint. She's an iPhone lover, so she's getting a 4S. Being an Android fanboy that I am, I have uh, an Atrix now, along with an Acer A100 tablet and Logitech Review. I'm obviously not going to stay that route. Uh, with the prospect of the Galaxy Nexus for some time, um, yeah, with the prospect of no Galaxy Nexus, Nexus for some time, is there any reason not to go for the Nexus S 4G? It's going to get ice cream sandwich. It certainly is. It's a nice phone. I like it a lot. I, th- it's I think phone. it's the best phone you can buy today. Absolutely. I might disagree with that Razor. Just saying. It's not nice. on Sprint, though. Go to no, Sprint. it's not on Sprint. That's a problem. Yes, get it. Don't wait. Do it now. And then sell it. Well, I mean, first thing, look, look on Craigslist. Yeah, uh, we were talking in a hangout the other night. We saw one for eighty bucks, you know, brand new on Craigslist. People, you know, they wanted to rush and get the iPhone 4S, so they want to sell the phone there they've got. Uh, see if it's there. Hmm. I don't think you should trust any of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make your own decision. Well, that, but he asked us. Well, nobody knows but you, right? You get you get to like experience it, feel it, see if you That's like true. it, read the you forums, and see if there's like major bugs with it first. I'm gonna say go with the Galaxy S2. That's just my damn. Uh, <laughs> it is a <laughs> sweet that that it does not exist. It doesn't. It doesn't say that, but I think that's a better <laughs> choice than the Nexus S4G. You're gonna get more life out of it, even if it isn't stock. You're just and a that- hater. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that 
And with that, I think we're going to uh, put an end to this podcast. Mickey, take us home. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can send us email to podcast at androidcentral.com, just like John and Chris did. Or you can give us a call. Leave a voicemail at 888-468-6158, extension 222, like Jerry, Charlie, and Will did. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on Twitter. The site is at Android Central. Phil is at Phil Nickinson. I am at TCPJ underscore Mickey. Jerry is at GB Hill. Corey is at C Streeter. And you can follow all of the writers over at the Android Central Twitter account. Of course, we are all on Google Plus as well. You can find us at our respective names. The entire site, and of course this show, brought to you by the Android Central Store, found at store.androidcentral.com. Place your orders by calling 888-468-6158. Buy stuff, please. I'm shameless. <laughs> I want money. you to start reading out my 30-digit Google Plus number. <laughs> Speaking of Google Plus, uh, the site is now on Google Plus. We have one of those nifty Google Plus page things, so we're not feeding every story to it yet, because... I don't know if anybody has that API hooked up and it's a pain in the ass to copy and paste all the day long. <laughs> yes, it is. But we are in there and we do pay attention. So uh, go circle us there because it's important that you do. Jerry, Corey, Mickey, Alex, and Renee. But before we go, up. before yes. we go, yes. I have to give a shout out to everybody with an Optimus S. Yeah. Get into the forums. Check out Your Mom Rom by Team Hydro. I heard yes. it just really, really is great. So What'd you call my mom? If you're... Still holding on to your Optimus S, get in there and give it a try. And I came up with that name, by the way, but just saying. Of course you did. <laughs> I love your mom jokes. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with my uh, sickness tonight. I hope the video didn't suffer much more than normal because of it. I'll get better soon. Uh, we didn't notice. I hope. I need an upgrade. That's my problem. Guys, Still thank you. Got chat room thank you everybody else see you next week good night everybody see you